Hello YouTube, this is Peck Tech, and this is my second video for 2012 about aquarium maintenance. Hello again, I've received a lot of questions on my videos regarding the maintenance of my aquariums and what I do to maintain them. Uh, this video is going to attempt to answer most of those questions. Uh, I'm going to answer questions about fertilizer, CO2, water changes, and just about everything that I do to maintain the aquariums. There are a lot of videos on this subject, and I encourage you to keep looking and find other things uh, that other people do, and kind of add it in with what you learn here, and come up with your own way to maintain your aquariums. There's certainly not one specific way that's the best, but there are... Um, there are a few fundamental things that you need to know. The most fundamental part of the aquarium maintenance is water changes. Now you might have a small aquarium at home, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you, uh, first we're going to use my daughter's aquarium, and I'm going to show you how to do a simple water change with a small aquarium. It's basically the same thing I do with my fluval floor at work, which I did not film this time. But uh, it'll give you an example of what you can do for a small aquarium. As we move along, I'm going to show you how we maintain the larger aquariums, like the 55, the 30, and the 56 gallon. I'll also be including in that, you know, what I do for the filters and that sort of thing. So here we go. And here we begin with my lovely assistant, Kerrigan. She's removing the lid, make sure everything looks all right. Then we unplug the heater and the pump. Next she's going to pull out her aquarium siphoning tool. It has a little bit of water in it. Oops! The way these work is you they have a little valve in it. So you can take it, put it in the water all the way, and then you kind of gyrate it a little bit like that. And the water will eventually start to pump down and you know down the tube and then to the gallon jug. It turns out a gallon jug is just about the right amount of water uh, for this aquarium so once you get your gallon jug and it's got a cap there we go then you're ready to dump it out. I always help out by filling it up myself with the with the big tube because I usually do it during my other water changes and the filters we replace I don't buy the uh, the filters from the store, I just kind of make my own. I cut the material out and really the uh, the carbon and stuff is just kind of extra anyway. And now on to the larger aquariums. I used to have a python, now I've got this uh, water changing tool by made by Tom's and it's okay. It will reach every aquarium in the house and it makes it real convenient to do water changes. I like to always put a filter down over the sink so no plants make it out into the environment. And this is called a venturi valve. The way it works is water pressure can either cause suction, bringing the water out of the aquarium, or it can uh, push water in. Next thing is to unplug the, the pump from the first aquarium. That will be the 12 gallon and you simply put the hose in and the water will begin sucking out. Sometimes it takes a little bit of finagling to get it just right but for the most part you just stick the hose in and try to avoid sucking up any of your fish. On some tanks it's easier than others. Right here you'll see a fill line that I've marked previously years ago. Once I reach that, I cut off the flow of water, unplug the next tank and the heater, and then start again. With the bigger tanks, you can, uh, once you get the water going, you can just kind of leave it there. You might want to hang around and make sure you don't uh, pull too much out or make sure nothing happens, but for the most part, you can just take the uh, Take the hose, get it adjusted just right, and then just leave it there. The 
the 55 takes a while to drain but eventually it'll get to its fill line there it is right there next to the shrimp a little piece of tape just marking how much is there and then it's done the 30 gallons are a real challenge because of all the baby guppies they always want to get in there and here's the 55 56 I'm sorry I usually begin by checking the pump. I want to see if, I, if I'm going to need to change its filters out and that sort of thing. So I usually start uh, by checking that and then, much like the 55, I let it sit there. With this one, I don't have a taped off mark, but I know that just that right part, that top of the driftwood, is, is my goal. And once I get there, it's done. The spec is kind of a different animal. Uh, it's just everything scaled back. I can't use the big hose, but I unplug the pump and the heater. I'm gonna start a siphon with a piece of uh, with a piece of airline tubing. Makes a little bit of a mess. You could probably use the standard aquarium tool for this too, but uh, this is what I've been using. It seems to work out pretty well. And here we have the filters. As you can see, the most complex of one I have is this Fluval G3. It comes with two kinds of replaceable media, mechanical, and that's the carbon. And it comes with this brush. And the brush is a really convenient way to clean out these uh, mechanical filters. You start by releasing the valve that cuts off the water to those tubes going up. Open the hood. Finagle this thing, turn it, and then you can pull it up, and there's the mechanical filtration. If you've got a sink nearby, what I do is I try to drain out as much of the water as I can. Release little tabs on the side, and that part will just slide right off. And then it just unscrews out of the main holder there. Then you can use your brush to push out the back of it and uh, clean, give the filter a good cleaning. Be sure to be nice to your significant other and clean out the sink after you do this. They really appreciate that. I don't use a lot of carbon in most of my filters. I, uh, I mainly just make my own, except for this one and the 55, which uses the penguin filters. Those penguin filters are so self-explanatory, I'm not even going to show them in this video. But basically, once a month, I replace those as well. And what I did when I bought this thing is... I, uh, I bought two of these mechanical filters that I'm cleaning and what I'll do is I'll clean one and then set it aside for next time. By the time a couple of weeks go around the chlorine and chloramines will evaporate out and I don't have to worry about harming the filter bed. Then I can take the, the one that I uh, had set aside, reinsert it in the uh, put all the little pieces back together and just put it back in. I don't have to worry about contaminating my filter bed at all. This is the this is what you would use for your carbon. Uh, you could put other things in here if you have other types of additives or something that you want to add to your aquarium. But as you can see it pops off. You can add uh, carbon and put it in. Here we see how easily it just kind of inserts back into the it only fits one way you just insert, insert it back there release the valve and you're ready to go and these are the uh, marine land hoods and what I do is I buy this material and I just kind of cut it up uh, I have a little scoop that I use it's actually to, to catch fish with but <laughs> I use it to cleanly pull the filters out and then replace them. Now onto the plants. If you don't have a set of tools like this, boy I gotta tell you they're a lot of fun and they make the whole job a lot easier for aquascaping in general. Once my plants, these in particular, that grow the fastest of all the plants that I have, uh, once they reach the surface I just sort of give them a haircut and trim them up. If you've got friends that have aquariums this is a great way to give them some extra plants as you can just take these stick them in the ground and they'll they'll grow they grow really well 
all my friends have all the plants they need right now so I'll just kind of gather these up and what I like to do is I stick them in a plant that I keep next to the aquarium it just makes for a nice mulch and well it's somewhere to put it without carrying a garbage bag around with you also trim out plants that I see as I'm draining the aquarium just take out my tweezers and go look for some dead leaves and things like that I always pull them out as far as chemical additives go I like to use AquaSafe and I have measuring spoons that are just for my aquarium uh, I buy it in bulk but I don't like to carry around the big bottles so I tend to refill my small bottle it's really easy as you can see and this is really important for taking out chlorine and chloramines and making your water safe. As far as nutrients go, I like to use Flourish and Giovanni's Fertile. This one has a built-in dispenser. As you see, you squeeze it, builds up, and then you just pour it in. I don't use CO2 in me in my aquariums, but I do use this Flourish Excel for the 56 gallon. For the beta tank, I like to use uh, Allison's Beta Spa. It's the same type of container as you can see. And it adds some nutrients that the beta would get in the wild. And now it's time to refill the aquariums. Start by putting down a thermometer and getting the water up to temperature. And once it's got to a place I like, I switch the venturi valve over so that the water will come out of the tube. Once the water is flowing nice, then I lock the tube down and move over to the first aquarium. I get the water flow going, and then I add the dechlorinator. I've got a measuring spoon for each one of these aquariums, and uh, I just fill it up as I'm going, and then I mix it really well inside of there. I haven't had any problems with this, and I'm, I do it with all the aquariums pretty much. I just mix it up as uh, the water goes in. For the fluval, uh, I have to prime the pump a little bit to get the water flowing, and then I reboot the filter. And since I've changed the mechanical filtration, I'm going to go through here and reset the counter so I know how many days it's been since I did it last and check and make sure that the flow and everything looks correct and then that is done for the beta after I've prepared the water and drained it I just simply fill it back up with the gallon jug now I can use this gallon jug uh, to refill any water that's evaporated out and I usually just kind of leave it nearby well that's it Thanks for watching and remember to tune in next time where I'll be explaining the, where to go on the web to find uh, more information about keeping up with your aquarium or keeping up with the fish or the plants that you might want to learn about. I'm going to go over all the resources I use to find out more about what I need to know. And uh, I think it'll be a big help to you too. Till next time, goodbye.